TechSoup. Uh, this is new member orientation and questions answered. We're going to be able to answer your questions um, throughout the presentation. So just feel free to type in the chat. I'm going to show you how you can engage if this is your first time here on our webinars. If not, you're an old pro and you know what to do. Type your questions in the Q&A. We will email you the slides and the video replay within 48 hours, probably tomorrow, but we always say that in case there's some tech issues. And if you need the closed caption, go ahead and type on this tap on the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I'm going to ask you one more big favor. There's going to be a survey when you close your screen. And some of you say, already said you had to leave early. Please fill out the survey. It's just three quick questions. We want to know how we can better serve you here at TechSoup. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Nick Finn. Enjoy the webinar, guys. Take it away. Well, hi, everybody. Great to see your uh, your names and locations coming up in the chat. Um, my name is Nick Finn, and I'm going to be hosting you today on our Welcome to TechSoup webinar. Um, other folks you've already seen on the camera, uh, my wonderful colleagues, Aretha Simon, Kevin Mulhall, and Kelly Garrett, all of them play a role in this presentation. Um, but for now, while I've got the screen share up and the slides, I'm going to go ahead and hide my own video so that we're all just focused on one thing and not trying to watch multiple things at the same time, which I know drives me a little crazy sometimes too. Right. So welcome to TechSoup. Um, today's presentation is designed to help you understand a little bit more clearly what TechSoup is, how we can help you, um, and where to go from here. Um, and before we get started, I want to start with just some quick basic terms um, that we talk about at TechSoup quite a bit in nonprofit technology circles. Uh, one is the term civil society, which is really um, folks who work not in the government and not in corporations, but in other organizations, nonprofits, charities, and other NGO organizations around the world. Civil society tries to fill the gaps and serve our communities and solve the problems that are not being solved by the government and free market or, or help solve issues that they're working on. Digital transformation is another term you'll hear. It really is the process of nonprofits embracing digital tech to enable and improve the functions and program delivery at your nonprofit. So it's trying to be technology forward um, instead of looking at it as something that you must endure. In fact, looking at it as something that can be very helpful. Um, digital resilience is the process of making sure that your nonprofit and its technology can quickly respond and adapt and then continue to serve during some kind of external disruption <clears throat> or crisis. So, for instance, as Aretha mentioned in the opening, um, we have a team member today who's joining us from a coffee shop in Dallas because the high winds there have knocked down um, the normal internet access that this person would use. So those are like examples of how like just daily activity can actually disrupt digital technology. Here are resiliences that we find another place to go for internet connectivity. Um, and of course, sometimes you'll hear us talk about cloud adoption, um, which is really not a new concept anymore. Um, but again, it is the idea of moving to platforms and data structures that rely on the distributed uh, storage and computing power on the internet, instead of everything just being on your local computer's hard drive. So with those key terms in mind, I want to pivot now to a larger discussion of what is TechSoup? Well, first of all, like almost everybody else on this call, um, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have a mission, and um, our mission is to support nonprofits working with technology to help them build a more equitable planet. At TechSoup, we host a catalog of affordable technology products from major brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many more. The prices in the catalog are not the public prices that they're, uh, that these organizations or that these companies charge for their technology. They are um, discounted or sale prices that we have negotiated specifically with the interest of nonprofits in mind because one of the greatest blockers to technology, honestly, is the cost. And so we try to do the best we can to hold those costs down for you. 
These days, we do a lot more than just have that technology catalog, though. We also offer numerous services to help nonprofits manage their technology stacks. Um, and those services we'll talk about more in this presentation. But but I will say, like in the big picture, these services in my mind are actually the entire future of how TechSoup will serve the nonprofit community. Um, because although acquiring technology is okay, it's really adopting it, implementing it, troubleshooting it, teaching staff how to use it. That's where the real work really comes in. We also create educational resources to help nonprofit staff build their technology skills and expertise. And then like all of you again on this call, we also have our own line of grant-based programming to help civil society use technology. We serve nonprofits of all sizes, not only in the United States, by the way, but around the world as well. Um, and as you can see here, a great number of them are very, very small nonprofits, and that's important to keep in mind. Um, and these nonprofits cover a wide range of social missions, um, which you can see in more detail when you do get this slide deck as part of the email after the presentation is over. So I'm going to start by going to TechSoup's website. I'm not showing the live site. This is a screenshot, so it may look a little different today. Um, but we're going to talk about the product catalog here. And you can get to the product catalog in two ways. One is this clear browse catalog button on the home page. There's also product catalog in the nav, in the navigation. Oh. The first big product brands that lots of nonprofits work with TechSoup on is Microsoft, um, because you know they are one of the dominant software creators out there. Um, and we provide nonprofits with access to Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Office 365 Enterprise. Um, we also provide access to the Windows full operating system um, and these are very common acquisitions from TechSoup that nonprofits come to us for. We also provide access to the Adobe catalog for nonprofits. Uh, that includes Adobe Creative Cloud. It includes Acrobat Pro DC. And one of the newer offers um, that lots of nonprofits are excited about is Adobe Express Premium. Um, which is a version of, well, it's a package that is a little easier to use than Creative Cloud. And it's great for like social media managers, folks who have to do a lot of work all the time fairly quickly um, to get multimedia presentations together. So Adobe Express Premium is that product. Um, and it is uh, currently a $0 admin fee for nonprofits. So a very popular pick at TechSoup. Um, Intuit QuickBooks is another big brand, big product in the TechSoup catalog um, with Online Plus and Online Advanced. Um, and uh, these products are a great example of how nonprofits can do a better job of, of building digital resilience. One of the things that TechSoup really saw during the COVID pandemic was that as soon as uh, nonprofits had to go to remote work 100% of the time, there were places that were still relying on a paper and pencil accounting system um, or a spreadsheet on a local computer. And when you weren't in the same physical location, it became really hard to work with those things. Intuit QuickBooks instead becomes, you know, the way to have a distributed cloud-based accounting system for your nonprofit. It's not the only product out there for sure, but a very popular one. Um, and there are oodles of other uh, brands in the TechSoup catalog. This is just a sampling of them, and, and I share them so that you have visibility to some of the other things that are available through TechSoup. Um, one of the areas where TechSoup does a lot of work with nonprofits now is on hardware offers. Um, I mentioned Dell already in this presentation. Dell is not the only hardware offer that we have. Um, you can reach the hardware offers by, again, going to the product catalog up in the top navigation and then going to hardware here on the left. 
Let's talk a little bit about what hardware is available. So first of all, we have both new and refurbished laptops and desktops, servers, networking machines, internet hotspots, headsets, et cetera. Um, and uh, there's a constant uh, rotation of different items coming through the TechSoup hardware catalog. Um, some of the bigger brands along with Dell include Lenovo and HP. You can access through TechSoup their uh, discounted catalogs for nonprofits. Um, TechSoup was also one of the pioneers in creating a line of business around refurbished hardware. Um, and these are, you know, gently used uh, laptops and desktops mainly um, that are still well within the lifespan of being functional business units. They are able to access the internet. They have the appropriate hard drive and processing speed. Um, and uh, this refurbished hardware is also, in our estimation, a really important part of going uh, more green at your nonprofit, not always having to buy brand new technology, reusing some stuff that has already been gently used, as I said. Um, and uh, while we were one of the original proponents of refurbished hardware, um, if you go out on the internet, you'll see that lots of other organizations and, and corporations are now providing access to refurbished stuff as well, which we think is great because that is just generally better for the environment. Um, and then lots of mobile devices available through TechSoup, monitors, networking equipment, which I mentioned before, printers. Um, one of the latest things that we have in the catalog is uh, virtual reality headsets. It's the MetaQuest 2 from uh, Meta. Um, and, you know, that's the head unit that can go on your face. It gives you full immersive virtual reality. Um, and for some nonprofits, there are some really interesting use cases out there for those virtual reality headsets. And we do have those at TechSoup now as well. Now, as I mentioned, there's much more to TechSoup than just a bunch of products, hardware, software, and a catalog. More and more, what TechSoup is designing and building are suites of services to support nonprofits who are using the technology that they have acquired. Um, and these services are available in the drop down menu in the navigation right here at the top. Um, and let's talk a little bit about what some of those are right now. Um, Help Desk is one of our most popular services, and it's really designed to help a nonprofit deal with one specific item that may be giving them trouble. Um, you know, maybe it's a printer, maybe it's some networking hardware, um, but we have both one-off and then an ongoing long-term engagement pricing, um, uh, and that's Help Desk. <clears throat> Managed IT is a much larger suite of services, which is designed to help nonprofits actually manage the full stack of all their technology. Um, this is particularly helpful because we know from years of work in the sector that plenty of nonprofits really don't have a single dedicated IT person. Um, often the IT person at a nonprofit uh, is wearing multiple hats, doing other work as well. Um, sometimes it can even be a part-time person or a volunteer or board member, and they need help sometimes managing the number of different technology items that a nonprofit is using. And Managed IT is our effort to provide a service to help support nonprofits who need that bigger scope of work. Um, more and more, uh, we also are understanding how much nonprofits want specific help on their website. Uh, in fact, we could do an entire separate webinar on nonprofit websites, um, and we do have some of those coming up, which uh, Aretha has on the calendar. Um, the website services are efforts to either help you build your first website, scope out what you need, think about what technology or platforms you want to use, help you get your domain, which is a specific service that we do provide also. Um, and then also, in many cases, uh, nonprofits know that they need a better website than what they've got right now. It needs editing. And uh, so the website services that we provide <clears throat> give you access to um, a couple of different profiles of what you can do there. Um, I want to be super clear here. These are not free services. There is a cost involved. 
Um, and that's an important part in and of itself of understanding what you need to change on your website is that you're going to need professional help and you're going to need to pay for that as well. Um, for, for some nonprofits, there's also the need to have a more sophisticated outbound marketing program, really meaning that uh, you are sending emails, maybe you're even running advertisements, trying to find folks who might want to use the services that your nonprofit provides. Um, sometimes this could even just be fundraising appeals. But for many nonprofits, again, they're looking for help on how to make that marketing outreach better. How does it work? How is that supposed to work specifically with a CRM, a customer relationship management database, right? And then how do you make advertising and email and social media and CRM and search engine optimization, all these gobbledygook online marketing phrases, how do you make it all work together? What are the best practices? What kind of technology do you need in place to make those things happen? That's what our nonprofit marketing services can help you with. I've already mentioned that we do provide a standalone service for domain registration. And then, as I mentioned before, one of the big things we also know is that getting technology for a nonprofit is really only the beginning of a process because then you have to implement it properly. You might need help choosing the right licenses for your nonprofit, especially for a product like Office or Microsoft 365, which has a lot of different options. Um, and uh, we provide support services for nonprofits that are using Office 365 for email and data migration services. Um, and that is a very, very popular offer at TechSoup. There's also something in that drop down menu called the Digital Assessment Tool. This is a tool um, designed to help your nonprofit understand where it's doing well and where it needs to do better in its use of technology stack. And it's a series of questions that run you through um, an evaluation of the different functional areas of your nonprofit. For instance, finance, fundraising, human resources, et cetera. You go through a series of questions and at the end of it, you'll get a response back from the digital assessment tool helping you see where you can do better, um, and in fact, for some nonprofits, that becomes a great hook for their own fundraising efforts because they can go to donors and say, hey, we, we really need to do a better job um, with a cloud-based finance system. We, we use TechSoup's digital assessment tool, and now we need to raise a little bit of money so that we can make those changes to our own use of technology. Another offer I want to bring to the forefront right now is um, TechSoup Boost. Boost is a membership at TechSoup that takes things up a whole level. Um, it includes content that you wouldn't necessarily get just on the open blog. <clears throat> and more and more, it also includes special offers, which aren't just in the catalog, um, but are only available to Boost members. And so, for instance, right now, um, we have a new initiative within Boost, where uh, Boost members at TechSoup are able to get some additional savings on Walmart's Business Plus subscription, uh, which is its own thing at Walmart that saves you additional money on items that you can order there. Um, there's some free shipping elements, um, but uh, like much of the TechSoup catalog, it can feel a little bit complex sometimes because you're using the TechSoup catalog to then get additional savings that you have to go to another website and get. Um, but those can really add up. Um, and TechSoup Boost is definitely, for $99 a year, a great value for nonprofits. I'd encourage you to take a look at that as you think about your membership with TechSoup. Um And then a second membership level we have at TechSoup is called Quad. Quad is really deep. Um, it is the place where you not only get uh, advice, but you get much deeper learnings about how other nonprofits are using technology. It's an opportunity to network with nonprofits that may be working in the same uh, issue area that you are working in. 
Um, and uh, it is an evolving membership from TechSoup right now, but very exciting at the forefront of how we see the nonprofit technology industry moving. Um, and uh, if you are a nonprofit that you know needs technology help, but you really need somebody else to do some of the heavy thinking and heavy lifting for you, uh, Quad is the place where you really want to go. And that is $200 annually per organization. Um, and Quad also includes all the savings that you would get in that Boost subscription. So for instance, I just saw a question in chat about that Walmart Plus offer. Um, so that would be available within Boost, but also uh, within Quad as well. Now, with that quick overview of what the TechSoup website does, I want to bring to the forefront uh, my colleague, Kelly Garrett. Kelly um, helps run the account management group or client services. And, and before she gets going here, I just want to frame up for you that there are two different things going on here. Kelly's going to talk about account management because this is the these are the folks, the live human beings, who will help you manage your TechSoup account, right? Um, they are not help desk. They are not support for technology products itself, right? Instead, Kevin, who will come on after Kelly, uh, works in the team that does that work. But what Kelly's going to talk to you about now is how to manage your TechSoup account and what are some common issues that folks might want to think about up front. Would help if I wasn't on mute here. Um, thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Been a uh, great chatting with you in the Zoom chat chat channel. Um, just a reminder too, we do have the Q and A option. So if you click on that, you can add questions that we'll go in and reply to. Um, also a reminder that all of this is going to be sent to you afterwards in transcript recording because that's come up a couple times in chat. So. Um, First things first is I did want to go over, um, uh, sorry. Uh, first things first I wanted to go over um, is product information. One of the main things that we get contacted about is questions about the products, the service, the offer, and, you know, different things about like, oh, does it, you know, work on a Mac or, you know, who's the donor partner for it or can existing subscribers get this? So number one thing, is that when you come on to uh, TechSoup.org, which does only serve U.S. organizations and territories, so something to keep in mind. Um, once you're registered um, as a member, there is a member profile and then an organization's account. Once you've either added your organization or associated your member profile to the existing organization's account, you'll then be able to start putting um, items in your cart and checking out. Um, before you do add anything to your cart and fully check out, we we'll highly recommend reviewing all of the information on a product page that you can. Most products and services are non-refundable and non-exchangeable. Once you've requested, checked out, and it's fulfilled, there's no uh, asking for a refund or exchange. So something to be very sure about before you move forward. Um, you're welcome to contact TechSoup Customer Service with any questions. Um, these are also the exact same products that are offered on the retail or commercial market. So QuickBooks Online Plus from TechSoup is the exact same software as QuickBooks Online Plus. Um, through internet, inter, uh, the Intuit or any other kind of reseller out there. So if you have any questions about in-depth product functionality, um, things along those lines, we'll usually let you know that you should probably go and double check with the donor partner. So this would be Intuit. I hmm. Looks like we lost Kelly there for a second. See Sorry. See at the top of that or how do I make? Hi, Kelly, would you turn your camera off because um, we're losing your stream and I think it'll, it'll probably be better if you turn your camera off. Am I cutting you out there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe try to turn. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so as I was saying, um, you know, really important to make sure you're looking at all this information, maybe contact the donor partner to ask about in-depth questions. Um, a lot of the information is on the landing page. So you've navigated through the drop down menus, um, either through services, product catalog, um, company, 
uh, donor company, uh, category, hardware, that kind of stuff. Once you've located a product, opened it, you'll want to look at all the information right underneath the product's name. So here you'll see donor partner into it, the categories, things along those lines. If you're looking for, say, other accounting software out there, you could click on accounting and it would take you to a section that shows all the accounting related products. Um, from there, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're looking at all three tabs of information that are highlighted down below. So descriptions always going to be on the left. Um, the middle tab can have different names for it, since this is a subscription product is subscription details and then rules, eligibility and restrictions on the far right. Um, so all three you'll want to look through before you move forward with adding the product to your cart. Um, next slide, please. Awesome. So middle tab, I would say is probably the most important one to look through. A lot of important information. Um, for example, if it's a subscription product, how will you continue your um, subscription in the years to come? So continuing service after a year um, also calls out different things like system requirements, um, existing subscribers eligibility. You know, some products are designed for folks that have never gotten that uh, product. Um, some are open to anyone that's, you know, if you've actively got a retail subscription, great. If you don't, you know, here's a workaround, that kind of stuff. Um, so definitely make sure you're checking all three tabs before moving forward with requesting the product, as I've said. Uh, next slide, please. Um, say you need support and you're looking and you don't see any of the information you're looking for on the product page or say there's something going on with your account. Um, for example, um, you're a new agent or representative and you're being asked for an association code um, so that you can add your existing organization account to your profile. Um, things along those lines, account management, uh, product information, et cetera, can all be found in our TechSoup support FAQ and articles, which you access by clicking the help button up next to the login. Or um, if you're already logged in, it'll be a circle icon. So if you click on that help, we'll be navigated to the next slide. So once you're here, you'll see that there is um, several different sections that are available. We are constantly um, updating and improving our TechSoup support section. Um, right now, we are working on an Intuit for nonprofits section so that there will be more QuickBooks Online in information readily avail available to our members. Um, here is where you can search for different topics or click on things like getting started or account access and management, things along those lines. Um, highly recommend poking around here uh, before reaching out. A lot of times information's right there for you um, and it will save you some time um, navigating the TechSoup support um, before you reach out to customer service. You're also welcome just to reach out to us right away. Um, you don't have to go to these steps. We just wanna make sure that folks are aware of the self-service options out there. Next slide, please. Awesome. So on the TechSoup support article, and again, these slides will be sent out to you and accessible within our archive um, and our YouTube channel. So you can definitely still get access to, this, access to this if you're having any trouble clicking on the link right now. Um, but if you go into our uh, TechSoup support, I highly recommend getting started on the TechSoup support services and resources article. Um, this covers pretty much all of the available uh, services that we have to support our members along with different resources, most of which Nick has gone over in this presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, quad you'll see is listed right there below. It's the product information um, that I was talking about. Things along those lines. So this mentioned TechSoup customer service is general customer service. We are not on to do download and installation support on an in-depth level. Hmm. I apologize. Things along those lines, but we do have. Just hanging on. Okay. My internet. I'm so I apologize that my internet is cutting out. I don't know why I am in San Diego and don't have Dallas force winds blowing, but 
maybe it's just a after three day weekend hiccup. Um, anyways, so highly recommend starting on this page because as Nick uh, mentioned, TechSoup customer service is general customer service. We can help you with your account management, eligibility questions, checkout issues. But when it comes to actual download and installation support, product functionality support, a lot of times we'll be directing you towards those services and resources that we've created for nonprofits like yourselves. Next slide, please. So this just kind of goes over what I was just saying. You know, you want to keep in mind that if you're contacting customer service, we can assist with the account management eligibility questions, um, different resources, support services, things along those lines. Anything for IT support, product support, in-depth functionality questions, mm -hmm. we usually recommend contacting the provider, the donor partner. So Intuit would be the donor partner for QuickBooks Online. A lot of times they're going to have access to their systems. Their support reps are going to be able to assist you with updating things, changing things, getting things installed. But if not, we always have the support services available as a backup as well. And sometimes partners do charge service fees. Uh, Microsoft does that sometimes. Um, and, you know, our offers might be more affordable than compared to an IT service fee from one of our providers. Um, next slide, please. Um, something to keep in mind is that we have, as of the beginning of this year, changed to a live chat only model. Um, this was to ensure that we could reach, um, help all of our members the best we could. So at this point in time, we don't have a contact us form. Um, we don't have a, a phone number to call. It is going to be this live chat only option. And these are typically our hours. It's not always going to be that way. They are subject to change. For example, we were closed yesterday. So our live chat was closed yesterday for the Memorial Day weekend. Um, but we are usually open uh, available Monday through Thursday during these times and Friday. Um, and these hours are called out in TechSoup support. Um, we do have two articles that go over how to contact us. Um, next slide, please. Um, for contacting us, I do recommend um, using a computer over at org. Thing Things along those lines. So if you see the help button, see that live chat button within the help bubble, that is going to probably be side of our hours or maybe our on a mobile not going to populate for some reason. Um, our hours are always posted at the top of that um, pop-up window from the help bubble. Um, we try to keep that very up to date with any closures or changes. So that should be accurate when you're looking at it. Um, and one last thing is I do recommend once you're in our live chat, if there is a bit of a long waiting time, just making sure you're kind of putting some in, something in every once in a while. We've heard different browsers sometimes boot um, folks if there's been um, inactivity for a while. So we do let folks know you might just want to put a period in or something like that just to make sure your browser doesn't um, time out um, with it. It's something we've looked into changing and it does seem to be dependent upon browsers. So something to keep in mind when you're contacting us. Um, next slide, please. This is just something to reference back. Um, it's going over everything that I kind of mentioned. You know, we do recommend um, not using a computer, or sorry, using a computer and not a mobile device. That being said, the TechSoup support um, website does work with mobile devices a little bit better. So it is an option if needed. Um, but these are probably the top three things that I find fix an issue when someone says they're unable to connect with live chat and they are within our hours of operation. Uh, just a reminder, we are based on the West Coast. So this is Pacific hours. Um, something to keep in mind is, you know, time zones that sometimes throws people off a little bit. Next slide. I believe that is the end of my presentation. I will hand this off to Kevin. Apologies again for my internet. I'm not sure what's going on, but... Uh, Appreciate you all for hanging in there and uh, have a fabulous rest of your week. Thanks, Kelly. Um, and thank you, uh, everybody. Um, and hopefully, if there's anybody here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, as Nick mentioned, that uh, you uh, are doing okay. Uh, we've had uh, some pretty interesting weather over the course of the last week and a half. 
Uh, my name is Kevin Mahal. I am a senior account executive, um, digital sales and solutions uh, on the customer success team. What is the customer success team? Think of us uh, in plain layman's terms is kind of the space in between. Um, Nick did a great job earlier of kind of um, filling in just at a at a core level, like what we are. So we, uh, the account management team and that portion of our client services teams handles the general types of supports. We are a small but kind of special team of, we'd like to consider ourselves advocates, uh, maybe advanced advocates. Uh, we are not a full scale solution providing team. We are, uh, we operate within that area um, that lies in between general customer support and full managed services. We are a team of six um, individuals with a combined experience of 20 years helping nonprofits learn more about the products and services that are available through us, through strategic engagements. Uh, we are, carry multiple certifications on our team, Microsoft, AWS, Google Cloud, uh, et cetera. Um, so we, uh, to Kelly's point earlier, is, is that um, we kind of are an opportunity that if there is a question that comes in about something, particularly Microsoft, as mentioned, um, on some of our other platforms, uh, we can kind of fill in um, perhaps to uh, address some uh, underlying issues that require a, like, a more immediate response time uh, that doesn't require full services. Um, engagements with us also include some additional value added benefits, um, such as uh, conversations and the ability to strategically uh, have um, sessions around uh, the latest practices and principles that uh, are happening in the nonprofit sector. Um, as shown here on the slide, some of the things that we do do um, include things like supporting requests for proposal uh, generation, reviewing scopes of work, technology audits, some light support around grant and fundraising strategy, um, as well as some non-managed uh, advisory services. Uh, one thing of note um, is that while we are here to be able to answer questions and I put into chat, with people had specifically around products that they were looking to acquire. Um, again, we are not managed service. Um, and in order uh, for organizations to fully take advantage of the services uh, that we uh, make available uh, through this model, uh, we are asking that these individual organizations become and join quad membership. As Nick said, uh, quad is in the whole scheme of things, kind of the creme de la creme of um, opportunities um, to uh, have someone in your corner to help uh, you along the way with the process. Again, the adoption piece uh, is, is again, going back to what Nick said, is very critical. We help bridge that gap between the identification of the solution that is needed and the general architecture of it moving forward to successfully onboarding and adopting the application for your organization. So that's us in a nutshell. We're kind of behind the, the scenes, a little behind the curtain, um, but we are here and we are here to help. Great, thank you so much, Kevin. Um, well, this brings us to our last slide of the day, which is much less dense than the other slides I've been sharing with you in the background this whole time. Um, but before we do wrap up, I, I actually want to say, I usually say this on the front, but frankly, it just slipped my mind today. But I want to say thank you to all of you, not just for attending the webinar today, but thanks for making the choice to work in the nonprofit sector. Um, we all know that it can be frustrating at times. Um, we're all charged with doing more with less. Budgets are tighter. It's harder to find resources. And yet we all know that the causes we're working on, the missions of the organizations that we're serving are really important. Um, and so that's why I say thank you, because like us, you've all made that decision to work in the nonprofit sector as well. And the work can be challenging. Um, technology can be extremely challenging as well. Um, and I think at the end of the day, maybe what is most uh, useful and helpful about TechSoup is, is because we are also a 501c3, we really do understand what it means to operate in the environment that you all are operating in. 
um, we know that it's not as easy as just simply paying more money for the next big thing. Um, but instead, we can be your advocate. We can be your helper. We're here to support you. Um, and I want to say the other important part of this is while we designed this webinar to be for new TechSoup members who have signed up with TechSoup already, over time, it's become clear that a lot of the folks who come to this webinar actually are not yet TechSoup members. Um, and so if you are not yet a TechSoup member, I want to just suggest to you that really the first part of your journey with us is to just join TechSoup, become a TechSoup member. Um, and that means signing up on the website. The join button is in that top right hand corner. And it also means adding your nonprofit's information to TechSoup. That is the only way that we can determine your eligibility and to make sure that you can receive some of the technology products available in our catalog. Um, we only serve nonprofits. TechSoup does not serve anybody else. Um, but it's really important that we can verify and validate your nonprofit status before you use the catalog or before you try to use some of the services or subscribe to TechSoup more broadly. Um, so if you've not already signed up and joined TechSoup, please do that. Um, and if you have already, um, and something that we discussed today uh, makes sense to you, is pertinent to you, uh, you know, sparks a thought about how you'd like to engage, uh, you know, please start and um, reach out through that site. Take a look at some of the offers available in the catalog that could be helpful for, for your nonprofit. Um, and uh, finally, as Aretha said a few times, uh, we are sending out this deck afterwards to everybody on the webinar today. Um, I, I did see in chat that a couple of folks are struggling with the links. Um, generally, they are working, and I verified in the background while we were running it today that the links are still working. So I can't explain why... There might be security settings on specific computers that are that are uh, locking that down. Perhaps um, the uh, presentation itself is a is a Google slide presentation. Um, but uh, with that, I want to say thanks everybody for also joining today, um, and uh, I hope TechSoup can be helpful and support you in your nonprofit's technology journey. Um, and uh, you will uh, watch out in your email for the slides. Um, and uh, appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much.